Hi, this is Michael Rubin. Welcome to Meat and Potatoes Harmonica, lesson number two. So today I thought I'd talk about some basics of music theory, just talking about the notes on the keyboard. Now you may say, well, if this is a harmonica lesson, what do I need to know the notes on the keyboard for? Well, the notes on your harmonica are the same as the notes on your keyboard, and if you can learn how to name them, you can communicate to other musicians, and you can do some interesting things in your playing. So, this is a melodica. It's, it's a little keyboard that you blow into. I'm not necessarily suggesting that you purchase a melodica, but I do recommend you buy yourself some type of keyboard. Um, it doesn't have to be anything real nice. It can be a $25 keyboard that you bought at a pawn shop, but you need something that, number one, has a visual so you can look at the notes and think about them visually and keyboards are great for that and also that you could press the key and it'll make the sound of the note and that'll really help you for a couple of things first off it'll help your ear training so that when you're trying to bend or overblow on pitch you can do that and it also helps get you, even in your mind kind of a sound of what a note sounds like and, th and then when you hear that sound in your head you can find it on your instrument and keyboards are real handy for learning how to do that. So I want to I want to talk about the white notes on the keyboard. Um, you know when you first look at a keyboard it, it seems like it's a whole bunch of notes. There's lots of white keys and there's lots of black keys and how the heck are you supposed to know which one is which? So you can train yourself to know which one is which and what I recommend you do is that every time you find a note on the keyboard you speak out loud about a landmark so you can remember where that note is. And I want your landmark to have to do with the black keys. You notice that there's two black keys here and three black keys here. And then there's another two black keys and another three black keys. So what you have are two different types of groupings of black keys. Two black keys and three black keys. So whenever you find a note to state out loud the landmark in relationship to either the two black keys or the three black keys is very handy. So in music there is an alphabet and I'm not talking about letters. Excuse me, I'm not talking about sharps and flats. The musical alphabet has letters and the letters are A, B, C, D, E, F, G and then it returns to the next highest A. So in the musical alphabetical order G is before A and A is after G. So here's the note A. Now is it within the three black key grouping or the two black key grouping? One, two, three. So it's in the three black key grouping. And it's not to the left of the grouping and it's not to the right of the grouping. It's in the middle. Now there's two notes that are in the middle, G and A. The way I would say it is A is in the right middle of the three black keys. So if I know that, then I can get on any keyboard and find the A's by looking for the three black keys. Here, here I was and going to the right middle. So here I was on this A. Now if I started on A and only hit the black keys from A to A, it would sound like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Can you kind of hear how this A and the higher A have a lot in common. They're similar to each other. They both sound like A. The only difference is one is lower in pitch and one is higher in pitch. Now most of the time when we talk about music theory we don't start on the note A. We normally start on the note C. And I'm going to explain why in a minute, but first let's find a C note. So here's an A note. So the next uh, white key to the right will be B, so here we were on A, now B, and then the next white key is C, so here's that C. Now let's describe it in terms of the two black keys or the three black keys. It's closer to the two black keys, and it's just to the left of the two black keys, so that's my landmark. C is to the left of the two black keys. So if I start, here's another C, if I started on C and just hit the white notes from C to C, it would sound like this. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. 
Sound familiar? We love that scale. We're, we're kind of obsessed with it. It's called the C major scale, and it's a great building block for a lot of how music works. Now, you don't have to start on C to get a major scale. The C major scale you do, but there's other major scales. There's 12 of them. So I'll start on A flat and make it say Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Do. <laughs> Let's do it where you can see it. Let's see. So I started on a black key and I could still make Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Do. I'll start on A. So I could do it starting on any key. But C is very special because C is the only starting point where you can make the keyboard say Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Do without playing any black notes on the keyboard. Every other starting point needs at least one black key. And that's why we love the key of C so much. If you ever met somebody who, you know, let's say you met a guitarist and he says, let's jam, and there's a keyboard in the room, you could say, well, let's play in the key of C major. And he could jam uh, a rhythm for you, and you could just pick out white keys on the keyboard, and you would sound good. So. That's kind of why we start on a C harmonica, or lots of people do, and instructors normally do, because until you start bending or overblowing, every note on your C harmonica is a note, is a white note on the keyboard. So it's a little easier to wrap your head around it. So if you ever met somebody who played guitar and you said, let's jam and play in the key of C major and you've got a C harmonica, just don't bend and you're going to sound fine don't overblow, don't bend, you're going to sound good. Okay, so next time we're going to get a little deeper into the other notes on the keyboard, and I hope to see you. Thanks very much.